Well, uh, we started off uh, last week, uh, and hopefully, uh, well, not hopefully, we will finish this today. Um, but uh, we talked a little bit about the benefits of soul winning. Uh, we talked about realizing that we have authority in Christ and, you know, you don't have to be bound by fear and all of that and intimidated by people, that the greater one is on the inside of you, that you, God made you bold, um, and that you have power uh, to be able to be a witness unto people. Uh, we talked about it's his ability working in you. We talked about realizing the integrity of God's word. Talked about the word gives light and removes blindness. And uh, we also talked about that we are ministers of reconciliation. We've been called for such a time as this to actually assist Christ Jesus to actually bring in the harvest of souls in these last days. Um, and, uh, and being an ambassador is you, you represent, you're, you're actually going on behalf of uh, the person that has the authority. So that's a good thing. So... And we also talked about uh, fear is of the devil. And that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Then we also talked about uh, the Ten Commandments. And we talked about how we've all violated at some point or another uh, the Ten Commandments. And that is a gauge to get us to see where we are uh, in terms of um, our, our righteous living, I guess, if you will. Um, and we know that because we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity, we're not perfect beings. So the chances of, chances of us actually violating these uh, divine laws that God has set before us is probably great. Um, we're not intentionally trying to uh, commit any of these uh, sins, uh, but because uh, lack of knowledge or just because we're just... Uh, what you feed the most becomes the strongest. Um, we, we may not have had always the ability to be able to just not, you know, violate any, any of these things. But God knew that ahead of time. And so he sent his son Jesus. Um, that was the whole purpose, honestly, is to reconcile man back to him. And so um, it's through his blood that cleanses us and washes all the sins in our lives and, and, and now allowing us to become, you know, uh, pure before a holy God. So without Jesus dying on that cross and, 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 and uh, paying that price for our sin, because Romans, and I think we talked about that, Romans uh, 3 uh, talks about that the, the wages of sin is death. So that's the penalty for, for, for uh, sin. And so we already know we broke the Ten Commandments. These are God's divine law, divine law. So there's a payment for that. And so what, what God said is, okay, you know what? I don't want these people to pay. I don't want them to pay by um, living a life of damnation, living a life in the, the lake of fire, burning for everlasting. Because after we, are, uh, uh, after we leave this earth, we will live eternally. And so... The goal is, is to live eternally with God, not eternally in the lake of fire. And so God desires, and he said, he said, it's his desire that not one should perish. So it's, a, it's very important to him that all of us get in. And so we have a big part in making that happen. The scripture talks about delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. When you start delighting yourself in the things of God, when you start looking at What's, 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 what's his passion? What is his love? What concerns him? Then you know you are really, really getting close to God because at that point, you're saying, man, I don't, know, I don't care what nobody else is doing. I'm with you. You know how you do your, your ace buku, you, I'm with you. you, got, you know, I got your back. Well, that's when you get to that level of, of um, sensitivity to the things of God, you are actually saying, God, I got your back. And when you do that, that is delighting yourself in the Lord. And he does give you the desires of your heart. So all these other things the scripture talks about in Matthew, seek you first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be added unto you. The kingdom of God is God's way of doing things. It's righteousness, which is God's way of doing things. And so, you know, God is saying, okay, just, just seek my kingdom first. And all the other things, the little desires that you want, all the things that you need, all those things will just be added unto you, but just seek me first. 
and my kingdom and my righteousness and uh, all these other things will be added. So we uh, talked about how those Ten Commandments really is a gauge to show us that we are in sin and we are in need of a Savior. Uh, Romans uh, 6, 6.23 talks about the wages of sin is death. And, uh, and let's just go right now to uh, Galatians 5.20. Uh, put a plug there because I want to. I really want you to see that Romans six twenty three. Um, I think it's important so that you understand what God was saying. Okay, it says, "For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, and it's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord." So, just so you'll know that that's that scripture is actually saying that the price for sin is death. But then it says the gift of God, so it's a, it's a gift that he's given to us, it's, a, it's his grace, um, is eternal life with, uh, with him, basically, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then now we'll go over to Revelations, uh, no, Galatians 5.20. Galatians 5.20 says, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, uh, E e e e e emulations, I'm sorry, emulations, uh, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, verse 21, uh, envies, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such alike. So anything like those things. It says, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in past time, that they which do such things, all those things that we listed, and the like of those things, it says, um, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So it's important that, you, that we understand all those things that he listed, and even things like those things that, were, 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 that we read, you know, all those things are, are sin in our lives. And, and if you notice, a lot of this stuff was actually in the Ten Commandments. So... You know, we've all have been guilty of committing sin by not following his holy rule. Let's go to Revelations 21.8. Sorry about that, y'all on the line. You heard a big thump. Revelations 21.8. It says, but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars. It didn't say even, it says all liars. That includes the white lies, the black lies, whatever. All liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So this is talking about when we you know, get all raptured up for those of us that are going to heaven. That, this is what this is talking about. There's going to be people, these people here that's doing all these things. Um, they will experience uh, basically the, the, the fire and brimstone. Um, now, I do want to say something here because let's say, well, well, it says liars, right? You said, you know, in some of these things, we, are, we have been guilty of those things. So if you are in Christ, you are actually covered by the blood of Christ. So then now we don't have to like be in condemnation because we're not perfect. Because we're not going to be perfect. So you don't have to be like, dang, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm, I've been, I, I just lied, I lied last night. <laughs> am I going to burn, crash and burn? No. If you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that, that blood alone paid the price for all this stuff that, that we talked about. It pays the price for that. Now, that's not a... That's not a uh, license to go ahead and just start just living a, a, a crazy life. Um, but it is to know that if we do ever miss it, we can go before the Father, repent. And, and then we repent, what that is, is to turn away. It's not just to be like, oh, Lord, you know, I'm sorry for doing what I did. And then you go back and do the same thing all over again, consciously. Sometimes you can do things unconsciously and... You know, that, that just happens because it's like in your default. You know what I mean? Pastor talks a lot about default. And, you know, sometimes that just happens until your subconscious mind gets filled with the right stuff. So, 
you know, sometimes that happens. But thank God for the blood of Jesus because I'm telling you, without his blood, we'd all be in trouble. All of us will be in trouble. So I want you to get it and understand because sometimes you, you can do things in life and if you, if you don't understand what Je the whole purpose of Jesus dying on the cross, if you don't understand that whole concept, you will actually miss out and be thinking, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be questioning your salvation. You'll be questioning, okay, am I really saved? You'll be questioning, will I even get to heaven? Because you're, you're looking at your, your shortcomings. But the blood of Christ covers that shortcoming. When you're in him, it covers that shortcoming. So you don't have to worry about, you know, now you will be convicted. Now conviction is the Holy Spirit telling you, now you know, uh, you know, John, you know, John, that, that wasn't right what you said. Now there's a difference between conviction and condemnation. The, the, the enemy wants to con condemn people and say, well, you call yourself a born-again Christian? You gave your life to Christ and you acting like that? You ain't, I don't know, you might not get into heaven. See, he starts planting these thoughts in your mind to dilute the very thing that really saved you. He's a, Jesus Christ is the Savior. The Savior means the deliverer. So he delivered you, but Satan will plant thoughts in your mind to make you think that what you did by faith it doesn't work. Or what you did by faith is not enough. Not enough. So just want you to understand what it is because if you don't have that revelation, it's going to be very difficult for you to explain to other people, you know, the whole concept of why they even need Jesus in the first place. People get so hung up on, you know, the benefits because there are benefits in living for God. For God. Um, one, one big one for me is that he helps me to deal with life. Life happens. Like everywhere you go, there's going to be some type of tragedy. It's going to be, you're going to hear it on your job. You're going to hear it on the news. I mean, life happens. But with God on your side, it's so much easier and you don't feel as hopeless. Like the people that, I, I, I watched a video not too long ago and it really disturbed me. But a guy actually was on a three, I think it was three stories high and, uh, you can hear some brothers in the back. It was, you know, you can tell they were brothers. But, you know, oh, man, don't do it. Don't do it. And he got up on the ledge, and, uh, and, and they were like, man, you know, hang in there. Don't, man, don't do it. You know, and, and I've never, I've never, for some reason, I never um, pictured what it was like for, for, for black people <laughs> to be trying to talk somebody off the ledge of, of committing suicide. And it was a white guy. And uh, so, the, I mean, these people, these black people, they was like, they was really like trying to get this person not to jump. And sure enough, that person jumped. And I mean, they filmed this thing on, on and I, as, as, the, as the black people was trying to tell the guy, don't do it. You could tell the guy was like, but you don't understand what I'm dealing with. What I'm dealing with right now is bigger than anything, anything that anybody could ever say or do. I don't think anything can change my situation. And you can just tell he was going, you can just tell he was looking in his mind's eyes about where he was. And he, he and I, when, I, when I saw him jump, I said, oh, and the guys was like, oh my God. I mean, it was just, it was like, and then you could hear the thump on the ground when he hit the, hit the ground. And I was like, oh my God. I mean, the guy, I mean, he just, he fell up like a pretzel, twisted on the ground. And of course, you know, I'm sure he, he didn't make it. But um, the point I'm making here is life happens, but without God in your life. See, these people that you run across every day, when you're driving in that car, that next person on the other side of that lane, there's some life, life is happening for that person. Everywhere you go, like you're sitting in front of a cubicle at, at your job or you're on the assembly line. Life is happening for these people. And so we got good news to tell them. The good news is, see, God will do those things. You know, have, you'll have peace, you'll have love, you'll have joy, you'll, you know, you'll have an everlasting life. But he, it's, it's hope for our future. It's so that you won't be so caught up into your situation that you just feel hopeless. Because hopeless is what the, the scripture talks about. Says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. So that right there, you know, is an indication that without hope, 
people are sick. They're sick. 